Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. In this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, but don't worry, we're still going to be reviewing an electric bike. I'm in Florida and we're gonna be reviewing an electric bike from a brand that sells Omnichannel. That's just a fancy way of saying that they sell direct to consumer online, or if you prefer, you can check out their dealers around the US. So they invited me out to do a review on the Denago Commute One electric bike. All right, let's go inside and check it out. And I certainly won't fault you if you decide to buy a Denago electric bike from dealership, but if you do decide to buy online, we would really appreciate it if you use our affiliate link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel. All right, let's step in to Estero Bike Cafe. All right, so I'm here with one of the owners of the Estero Bicycle Cafe, and they have a beautiful shop here. Thank and you. as I was walking in, I was admiring all the bikes here. So. I think first off, maybe you want to talk about um, how you guys became a Denago bike shop and you know how you came to find the brand and how has it been going? I know you've been selling these for about seven months. Yeah, well, uh, we have uh, at the first, we have uh, like a high-end e-bikes, more than 4,000 and up. Um, and we have a few customers coming in and asking for more friendly budget bike. So we was looking for some bikes that was good price but at the same time good quality and um, with base here in usa that's important for us uh, we can take care of the customers if they have problem in the future with the bikes yeah and one thing that i've noticed their prices are the same whether you buy them here in the shop or online and let's just take a quick look so if you are familiar with the channel you might have already seen that we've done a denago fat tire, this is the step through. And then they have the more affordable model. This is the city step through that they have. And then behind it, you can see a high step. And it looks like some smaller frame sizes, a little bit more accessible to uh, shorter riders perhaps. Correct, yeah. These are 1300 bucks. And then moving up, this is the bike we're gonna be reviewing. This is the Commute One with the integrated battery and hydraulic disc brakes. And this one comes in at $1,800. Yeah. So this one is uh, it's a really good bike. Uh, the commute uh, came with the integrated lights uh, as well. The brakes are hydraulic, that's really important. Um, and the feeling on the riding is amazing, it's really good. And talk to me a little bit about customers that come in here. Obviously, if they're looking at a Denago, it's a more affordable electric bike. Well, the, the biggest fear is if they get bike online, then if something happens with the bikes, they don't have a backup or someone to reach. With Denago, we have the advantage that they base here in USA, they have the part, they have everything over that the bikes are really good quality. So that's why we, one of the reasons we decided to take the bikes, they, this brand, because we believe that we can help the customer in case that they need support. Yeah, and how have they been selling, would you say, for the last seven months that you've been a dealer? Uh, they say really good. People, they they happy with the bikes. Um, we have a cafe at the shop, so we have everyday people coming in and riding their bike and, and coming in the morning for, for a coffee. And they love with the bikes. Yeah. They've yeah. been performing amazing. And what is your most popular model that you've sold? Well, the Commute. The commute. Yeah, that's the bike that most people like because it's a complete bike with fenders, rack, everything in. So it's, it's uh, really nice. All right, so that's the step up from the city, which we showed off earlier. And we're gonna get into all the details and maybe stay tuned until the end of the video. We'll try to get some tips if you happen to be in the Estero area looking for some riding. But with that, let's get into the full review of the Denago Commute. Let's get into the walk around, talk about all the specifications, and then I'll get into some first person riding footage. We'll see what this bike can do and finally, third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Denago commute. As I already talked about, this is an $1,800 electric bike. I really like that it comes in two different sizes. So step through as you see it here and a high step, but even more, there's two different sizes. This is the small medium on the step through. And I was a bit surprised as someone who's six feet tall, I fit on this bike pretty well. Of course, if I had my choice, I would opt for the large, extra large size. And two different colors, bone as you see it here, as well as blue. 
and the bike weighs 64 pounds. Let's move over to the components. We have Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. This is a component that we see on many electric bikes, especially in the more affordable bikes that have hydraulic disc brakes, a component that I find that works really well. And of course, they're much better than mechanical disc brakes, less finicky, easier on the hands, and provide more stopping power. In the front, we have a bolt-on front axle. So if you want to be able to repair a flat, say you go out for a ride, you will want to bring a wrench in order to remove this front wheel. It is not a quick release. And by the way, those rotors are 180 millimeter rotors. The bike comes with these full coverage metal fenders. They look quite nice as well. Front and rear. Let's move up to the suspension. This is a basic front suspension fork. There's no preload adjustment and there's no lockout either. It is Zoom branded, the same brand that I talked about with those hydraulic disc brakes. Now, in my opinion, this functions better than the super entry level front suspensions that barely give you any suspension. I'll push on it to give you an idea of what you can expect. Certainly going to provide some comfort on the road. For tires, Denago went with a little bit of a unique choice on a commuter style electric bike, though I do like the choice because it gives you additional stability and comfort while you're riding. These are 27 and a half by 2.6 inch wide tires. They have a street tread and also reflective sidewalls for additional safety. So I really like this choice and more of a unique choice again on a commuter style electric bike. Let's talk about cabling and the head tube. You'll notice that there's no four bolt pattern here, so no ability to attach at least a Denago front rack. As far as cable management goes, they did some wrapping as it gets closer to the down tube, but up here you can see that the cables are a little bit looser, so they might be able to clean this up in a future generation. Now, instead of the integrated light being mounted to the front fork, which we most often see, they opted to put it here at the top and it actually attaches right to that stem plate, which I think is a unique solution. And it's approaching dusk here and this light is definitely visible. Of course, if you want additional visibility, the flashing rechargeable lights are a good option as well. Moving on to the cockpit, this bike surely is designed as a comfort commuter. That's why you see these really nice swept back handlebars. They'll put you in a more upright riding position, but even more, you have the benefit of this adjustable stem. Always like when companies include those because you can really dial in where you want the handlebars depending on your preference. Moving on to the grips, we have ergonomic locking grips, very comfortable on the hands. I already talked about the Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. They also have motor cutoffs. So as soon as you hit the brake, it's going to cut power to the motor. Thumb throttle on the left, as well as the controls. If you hold the pedal assist up button, that will turn on the integrated front headlight. And you can see there is a walk mode by holding the pedal assist down button and the power button is located beneath the controls. Before we get into the display, let's talk about the MicroShift Shifter 8 speeds. Now this is a component that I've seen a few times, but it's not overly common. I do personally prefer this compared to the very basic Shimano Sysindex thumb shifter because I do prefer the trigger shifters. Let's jump over to the Denago display. On the right side, we have battery capacity. It has bars as well as percent. You can see we have 90% battery left on this bike. Miles per hour front and center pedal assist in the bottom left hand corner, zero all the way up to five. And you can see there's bars indicating that as well. In the bottom, we have trip, odometer, as well as max speed, average speed, as well as a range estimate. You can see in pedal assist level five, it estimates that we have 35 miles of range, goes down from there, 39 miles, 42 miles, 45 miles, and in pedal assist level one, 47 miles. Now you can get into some advanced settings by holding the plus and minus button at the same time, but my bike already came set as a class three electric bike with a top speed of 28 miles per hour. The screen brightness was already turned up, so you're likely not going to have to go and change any settings. Let's talk about the battery. Nicely integrated into the down tube on the step through model. On the high step model, it's actually located underneath the frame, so something to keep in mind. Now this battery is about average size. It is a 48 volt, 13.6 amp hour battery. And the bike does come with a three amp charger, which is slightly faster than we see on some other electric bikes that typically come with two amp chargers. You can get an idea of the battery capacity by pushing this button on the battery. Blue is going to be almost fully charged or fully charged. And you can charge the battery both on and off the bike. One thing I notice is there's no bottle cage bosses on this bike. 
for the saddle. This is a pretty standard saddle. If you want something more comfortable, check out our electric bike accessories list where I compile the ones that I see most people purchase. What I do like about this seat though, is it does have a handle on the rear, which can be really handy when you're lifting up the bike, moving it around. Denago includes a zoom suspension seat post. In my opinion, it leaves a little bit to be desired. It's on the most entry level as far as suspension seat posts go. If it were me, I would put a SR Sun Tour NCX on here. It gives additional comfort, though I guess it is nice that they include one nonetheless. For pedals, Denago includes very simple metal pedals with reflectors. We see these types of pedals on many electric bikes that get the job done. Though if you want something with more grip or other colors, you can certainly buy them. The kickstand is located towards the rear of the bike, so no issues with the pedals coming in contact with it, which I really like. We have the other Zoom hydraulic disc brake in the rear, and the Denago Commute 1 comes with a rear rack, which is really handy. It has a 25 kilogram capacity, and it does have pannier holders here if you wanted to throw some bags on this bike. In the rear, we have the other metal fender, and we also have a battery-operated rear light. Now, usually at this price point, we do see companies include an integrated light, so I'd like to see that changed on this electric bike. 500 watt motor in the rear. Stay tuned for the first person riding footage and we'll see what this motor can do. Should get me up to 28 miles per hour. In the rear is a matching micro shift derailleur. Again, in my experience, and I imagine for most people that are doing recreational riding, this is going to perform just fine. For gearing, we have 11 to 32 teeth, and this is a cassette. And in the front, we have a dual-sided metal chainring, 46 teeth. Something I would like to see the company include is a chain stay protector to help keep the frame looking nice. And for those curious, this bike did fit just fine on my one-up bike rack, bringing it back from the bike shop. But with that, let's get into some first-person riding footage and see what this bike can do. All right, let's get into the first person riding footage. One thing I wanted to call out on this display is that even in the sunlight, it's pretty easy to see. You get a little bit of glare, but I have no problem reading the current speed, which is usually what I wanna see. For this testing, we'll be using the GPS app. This is the speedometer app from Cool Nix. We'll be comparing that to the display on the Denago. And first test will be throttle only, and then I'll go through the various pedal assist levels. One thing that's unique about this electric bike is you have no access to the throttle unless you're moving at around two miles per hour, which means you either need to start the bike using pedal assist or giving yourself a little push with your foot perhaps. All right, let's go with our throttle only test. Three, two, one, give myself a little push and throttle only. And there it kicked on. Four, six, eight, nine, looks like the GPS is catching up to the display here. There we go, 20 miles per hour. Now that's the class two designation with the throttle topping out at 20 miles per hour. But this is a class three electric bike. So we should be able to get up to 28 miles per hour. Now people do ask me, can you use an electric bike with no assist? And of course the answer is yes, it'll function just like a very heavy non-electric bike. And I have it in the lowest gear and I'd probably shift up here, but going about eight, nine miles an hour. So it is doable. Hello. Okay, let's go in pedal assist level one. And I feel like it's nice and easy, which I really like. I think it's very important for pedal assist level one especially for new riders to just be eased on into it. Get used to having a motor. All right, I would shift up here though, second gear, maybe even third gear. And we're going eight, nine miles an hour. Let's go into pedal assist level two. Feel the motor a little bit there, up to 10, 11, maybe shift up again. So we're in fourth gear, pedal assist level two going about 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. I feel a pretty big jump there. Fifth gear, sixth gear, going about 17 miles an hour. Of course, when you get up to speed, you don't feel as much of that acceleration from the motor because it's just keeping you at the speed, in this case, 17 miles an hour or so. 
All right, let's go into pedal assist level four. And again, feeling that power as expected, given we should be able to get up to 28 miles per hour. Still hitting about 20 miles per hour here in Pelsis level four. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis level five. And there we go, I can really hear the motor and I would shift up to seventh gear. And there's eighth gear, 26 miles an hour. Actually feels pretty effortless. Those nice hydraulic disc brakes. We'll get back up to speed again. And I'm pedaling at a leisurely cadence, not putting in, overly exerting myself. And there's 28 miles an hour and I can feel the motor kicking off. So I would say it's pretty easy to get to the 28 miles per hour. And you can kind of control whether you want to put effort in, have a little bit of a faster cadence or not, up to you. It's not ghost pedaling. So I think it's geared pretty good. Gets a little bit difficult for some of these brands when you get to 28 miles per hour, having the bike geared appropriately so there is no ghost pedaling. All right, so we are in flat Florida, which means not a whole lot of hills. In our reviews back in Wisconsin, we take the bikes up our large hill climb test. Now I imagine this bike would have no problem getting up our large hill, just a matter of what the minimum speed is, just given the power that I've experienced here. But we have a bridge up here, so I thought I would throttle only up it just to see what we get. And just with that throttle, the, the reason they have that so the throttle isn't immediately engaged from a, a stop is just simply the fact uh, for safety, really. And yeah, it's holding us at 20 miles per hour. Now, in my opinion, I'd personally, I've ridden electric bikes, I have a lot of experience, so I'd prefer to have access to the throttle. I'm not accidentally going to hit it. For some people, maybe it's nice to have. You can let me know down in the comment section what you think. There's other ways to solve this too. They could be in, have it so in pedal assist level zero, you get no access to the throttle. It's just something to be aware of on this electric bike. And we're at the beach. One awesome thing about this area is it's so much easier to bike to the beach than it is to drive, park, walk across that bridge, as you can see all these people are doing. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Denago Commute electric bike. Denago might not be a name you're familiar with, but they are very quickly making a splash in the US e-bike market. Over 100 dealers and growing. We first reviewed their step through fat tire e-bike, which is one of the few torque sensing fat tire e-bikes at sub $2,000. Denago is keeping naming conventions pretty simple. After all, this is the Commute Model 1. But this e-bike isn't just for commuters, it has great features that anyone can appreciate. First, I like that the bike comes in two size offerings in both the high step and step through. Of course, I'm always going to steer people to the step through for increased accessibility, but it's nice a high step is available if you prefer. The wide tires will give you additional confidence in riding and it's a more unique feature on this type of e-bike. A basic suspension fork adds to the comfort, though I would have liked to see something with a lockout and preload adjustment, which usually is an indicator of something slightly higher quality. The swept back handlebars make for an upright riding position, and overall it's undoubtedly a smooth and comfortable ride, aided by the ability to adjust the handlebars with the adjustable stem. The Zoom hydraulic disc brakes are the most common hydraulic brakes we see on e-bikes we review, and for good reason. They're affordable and perform well. I prefer the micro shift shifter and derailleur when compared to the entry level Shimano components, and you get eight speeds instead of the usual seven. Onto the electronics. The 13.6 amp hour battery is about average size and it's nicely integrated into the frame. The 500 watt motor was a bit of a surprise. The pedal assist levels could perhaps be tuned slightly better. Pedal assist level one and two feel great and pedal assist level three accelerates pretty fast. Something new or unsure riders should be aware of, but something confident riders might enjoy. It's obvious Denago wanted this to be a fully outfitted bike 
Hence the inclusion of front and rear fenders and a rear rack. I wouldn't mind seeing a front rack option as well for additional cargo capacity for those that need it. The suspension seat post is just okay, but hey, we can't knock them too much for an accessory that most companies don't include. It's just that once you ride on one of the higher end suspension seat posts, you just can't go back. While an integrated front light is included, I would have also liked to see an integrated rear light, perhaps in the next iteration. Speaking of new bikes, Denago just launched three new models, the Cruiser 1, Folding Model 1, and City Model 2. Let me know what model you're most interested in us reviewing in the comment section below. Overall, the Denago Commute 1 fits in nicely price-wise with a lot of other commuter e-bikes on the market, especially taking into consideration the ability to buy it at a local bike shop. Though if you buy one online, we'd certainly appreciate it if you use our link down in the description. But you can also take what you've learned here and go test ride one for yourself if you happen to live near a dealer. And that's one of the huge selling points. You'll never be left wondering if you'll get support. All right, we got Carlos who's going to tell us a little bit about this area and where you might want to take an electric bike, say you're on vacation here, where might you want to ride? Yeah, uh, as uh, my partner was explaining everything on the uh, area, the people coming, uh, I think the better deal that you ride here is more to take uh, the people they have on the uh, community, inside the community they have the, uh, a big community of the world, they can ride the bikes. Uh, the, buy, uh, uh, the other thing is uh, at the weekend and the morning, there is safety because there is no too many cars on the road and that allow the people to make a ride. Another option is when they go up at the bridge and they go inside the university, there is a safety place where the people, they can enjoy the ride as well. That's where the people, we in Tallinn, there's a, another option they can do, it, specifically here in Estero. People are scared about the traffic, you know, every day the traffic is a lot, but that's a very good option. Uh, I think it's, yes, uh, we've been talking about generally about the Denago. There is a very uh, nice band, as my friends say, but uh, the company is a very serious company. They, we got a good relationship with them, and that's to give you a confidence uh, to us to open the brand here, to bring it in here, and then to transmit the confidence to the customers. Uh, we don't want to take the whole day explaining all the problems that they have, but they know what we're talking about. There's an electric bike on the world. There is many brands. I don't, uh, don't want to say they are not serious, but I, I know there are some serious. But uh, most of them, they are not serious. They got many problems, which is we fix the bike here. Most of the dealers, they don't fix the bike. And we are uh, open to fix the electric bike here. We notice this, what is the problem and where the problem coming from. Uh, here in USA, specifically in Texas, we have the headquarter on the Nago. Any problem that we have, they just get the phone, not email, and they respond right away. I think that's the best option to get a Denago bike. That's why we have the Denago bike here. We open a, a different level bike as well, but an entry level bike. And to beat the price online, I think the Nago is the more popular bike are uh, the more efficient bike now than the USA. So there you go. If you want to buy a Denago electric bike, you might want to see if you have a dealer near you or perhaps you're here in Florida, you can check these guys out and uh, test ride a bike and take one home. Don't have to deal with putting it together. That's a huge plus for those who aren't as confident. All right, with that, thanks for watching and mm -hmm. we'll see you in the next one.